So yesterday I made a post on threads and it went like this. Your music sucks because you make music that you like instead of what the consumer likes and your content sucks because you make content that you like instead of what the consumer likes. And genuinely, I kind of thought this was pretty innocuous, but apparently that was not the case because it was met with some pretty intense response. I got like a lot of hateful stuff. Like I'll just leave it at that because I don't really want to talk about the negativity, but like 193 comments like a lot of it was actually very positive but like and supportive but like a lot of it was very like yuck you know and uh, i think it's interesting because i'm not sure why people have such a strong reaction to stuff like that because i think what they're picturing is that like there's like a dad who gets like a crayon drawing from their child and they're like here daddy like look at this picture that i drew do you what do you think about it and the dad is just like well did the consumer like it did you make any money with it how did it do with the box office oh like it didn't you didn't do that oh well then it sucks like for one no father would do that and if there's a father that's doing that like lock that man up and like bury the key melt it down that's not even remotely the scenario that like this type of statement is ever being uttered in right so it's really interesting that people put it in that context and i don't really want to address that crowd too much more other than saying like i think they're pretty much lost in terms of what i want to talk about in this video so really what i want to speak to is the people that are kind of like more so on the fringe of like okay like i really don't like the way that statement sounds but like if it's the truth or if it's kind of close to something that might be the truth however unfortunate it is how can i navigate that and still do what i want to do those are the people that i want to talk to because that's me no one fucking likes that like wake up wake up no one likes that we have to make stuff sometimes in a way that we don't want to but that's the way it works in business that's how it would work in any other business so it's like really confusing to me why the breakdown happens when we get to music and that goes into why music is so devalued is because everyone devalues it at every level the people making it devalue it and the consumer devalues it because maybe because they get to participate in it at some level because some of them played the recorder in the third grade i'm honestly not sure but it is frustrating however i do want to speak specifically to those fringe people and the first thing i want to say is you can do both at the same time you're supposed to do both at the same time that's kind of the point you want to make what you make and get so damn good at that that the market just decides to make that a part of like it's commercial zeitgeist right i love talking about this one clip of michael jackson basically planning out his entire career when he was 12 years old because the one thing people like to say is like well the best acts never did that and it's like no actually the most successful people think like that the most and then they just kind of like figure out how to take their talent and meld it together with that and then people were giving me examples of like rick rubin saying to follow your heart i'm sure rick rubin says that a lot i've watched a lot of rick rubin interviews but rick rubin is also for one worth eight figures rick rubin also regularly says that music is a commercial business like and he has a whole book where he talks about that which i have read so it's really funny when i get commentary from people who have definitely never even like read a book probably who are like talking to me about rick rubin spelling his name wrong telling me what rick rubin thinks when i've watched days worth of rick rubin content and read everything he's like ever published right so it's very interesting to like think about where these people are basing it on but those are the people that confuse so much of what's going on so i'm gonna run that clip of michael jackson really quickly right now even a pre-teenaged Michael Jackson knew that he had to approach his future success with seriousness. In a documentary, his estate legal advisor reveals this seriousness while reading notes that MJ wrote as a child. This is dated November 6, 1979. He was on the road with his brothers on the Destiny Tour. MJ will be my new name. No more Michael Jackson. I want a whole new character, a whole new look. I should be a totally different person. People should never think of me as the kid who sang ABC, I want you back. I should be a new, incredible actor, singer, dancer that will shock the world. I will do no interviews. I will be magic. I will be a perfectionist, a researcher, a trainer, a master. I will be better than every great actor roped in one. I must have the most incredible training system to dig and dig and dig until I find. I will study and look back on the whole world of entertainment and perfect it. 
take it steps further from where the greatest left off. I don't think any pop star in the last century had more natural born talent than MJ. Yet, even as a child, he knew that he needed to be quote unquote, a researcher, a trainer, and a master. And now that we're back, I actually meant that it's his estate manager, but the point being, Michael Jackson was someone that was very serious from a very early age on. And just another point, people like to talk about the fact that, oh, it was his dad and his dad was abusive. Bro, everybody had a traumatic childhood that formed them. If you didn't, you are a fucking anomaly and you know it. So if you're not that anomaly, then you have a very similar type of experience. Just because your dad wasn't Joe Jackson doesn't mean you didn't have some kind of trauma that formulated you. I can guarantee you as an African child who grew up in the South, I had very similar experiences to Michael Jackson, but I can guarantee you that's not why I'm ambitious about my creativity. It might have predisposed some of the ways I act about stuff, like music, for example. I know a, de a decent amount about music because they forced me to take music classes. They forced me to be in choir. I know a decent amount about information and stuff like that because they forced me to read a lot and things like that. They also beat me a lot. They were African, bro. Be serious, be real. We're just having conversation, dialogue, discourse, right? Everyone goes through it. That is a really bullshit ass excuse to give yourself for why Michael Jackson was able to sit down and just plan out his career as a 12 year old and why like someone else is saying that you can't do that and use that as a plan to make something that you like that is also commercially successful. That is just absolute bullshit and the thing is that the easiest way to be successful is by just again making what you like and then turning that into something that is commercially desirable so before we get into talking any more about that let's talk a little bit more about the fucking elephant in the room i for a long time let this dog shit community online convince me basically that i shouldn't make money right and when i finally got to start having conversations and i'm just going to tell you what a lot of people won't tell you and i don't mean this in like a oh a creator is outing people because that's definitely not what i'm doing that's not the kind of conversation that i'm having but just to be transparent because i noticed there's not a lot of that particularly in this space to be transparent with at least the people who will sit down and watch this video when you start having conversations conversations with the musicians, the content creators, the engineers, the artists, the ARs, the managers, the people who run these companies, the people at BeatStars, the people at Airbit, are you like, you know what I'm saying? They are out here to get paid. They are out here to get paid. Everyone is about that paper, no matter what they told you, no matter how they presented it. Every, and that's not bad. I'm not saying that, that to say that's bad. I'm saying that to say that like anyone who's telling you they're not either one doesn't know or is trying to lie to you. Like that is the honest to God truth because everyone who is doing it, who looks successful or who is actually successful is about that paper. If anyone is faking it, they're definitely faking it for that paper. But if anyone's doing it authentically and it like is successful, you have to basically to some extent be about your business. You have to be about serving the consumer, bro. So that's the thing. If you want to win, you will win because there are so many dumbasses who can't accept that truth and are willing to keep accepting like the gatekeeper fed lie that like, oh, like all you have to do is like just make stuff from your heart. The money will come and you don't have to want money. It'll just flow to you if you like put all your passion into the art like that is not going to happen pretty much. Nah, like you can get really good at what you're doing but then the consumer still has to like it. So if you get so lucky that you make something just so off cuff and you never have to like kind of like tailor it to be popular or like commercially palatable, like congratulations. I would say you're the exception and not the rule though. And if you do want to be the exception, please go be the exception and come back. But don't tell me Michael Jackson is the, uh, the exception, right? Because he's not. He planned it out. Like, don't tell me Rick Rubin is the exception because he's a businessman. I read his book. So like, we should stop saying stuff like that because it's fucking stupid and it makes musicians look fucking stupid. So like, if you wanna make money as a musician, say you want to, which you should, because that means you're gonna provide value for people and not just be someone who's like, listen to my art because I'm artsy fartsy, right? Who who gets who gets anything out of that, right? No, nobody, right? So like, let's be adults about this shit. If you don't wanna be an adult, comment your mean comment i don't fucking care bro because the truth is the truth the pope is catholic water is wet music is a business bro i really don't care now 
Thank you for listening to my diatribe. Please do not forget to subscribe. And while we're at it, please grab the 14 drum kit. It's a really awesome drum kit with sounds from my placements. And you get to join my newsletter where I give you sauce from like consultations that I do for like six figure and seven figure creators and businesses and stuff like that. Really, really good stuff. But moving into the next section of what I want to talk about in this video, the thing about knowing that music is business is that it's a very important thing to understand, but that's a very entry level kind of thing in terms of like, now you're just starting to play the game, right? How do we take knowing this and turn it into a plan that puts money in our pocket. Genuinely, again, if you find any of these exceptions out there, bro, tell me, bring them to me, show me them. If you become one, please come back and give me the sauce, bro. I'll partner with you. I'll pay you to teach it to me. I'll pay you for consultation. I promise you, I want to know that. I want to know the cheat codes. So I'm going to tell you how I make money. I don't know how other people in the world make money because I only know what I do. I don't know how other people in music and creativity make money. I only know what I do. I make money by selling shit that's it i make something that would be something that someone wants or needs and then i tell them where it is and i give it to them that's barely selling right that's kind of marketing really but it's kind of really branding i don't know what it is but you got to put it in front of people let's just call it selling because so many people are uncomfortable with that it's like the truth is though no one is going to buy anything if you don't sell it to them. I promise you, you can try to be this cool edgy guy who's like, yeah, I've got stuff for sale, but you've got to like dig through my link tree and then go to the website and then go to the website on the website and then go to my beat stars and then you'll be able to access the kit. I promise you, you will live and die and no one is going to buy your kit, bro. Tell niggas the kit is for sale somewhere. I'm not saying to make your video, half your video and ad when you make content like some people do but like bro don't be scared to sell either and that's the other thing when you see these content creators making a video and bro i've done it before i don't do it anymore but like come on bro niggas are having 25 percent of the video be an ad for the kit what do you think is going on why do you think tracklib is paying for sponsorships in our videos guys what do you think where do you think the money come in <laughs> bro if, if you could see the pockets of these companies you would know this shit is nothing but money i'm telling you i'm telling you maybe we'll do a separate video or a story time about some of the conversations i've had because that's not what this video is about i just want to communicate for this this section that nobody will buy anything if you don't sell it you would have to be an anomaly basically which like i don't know any of them that are because i mean again you can't really name those famous examples because you don't really know them even though they might write memoirs they have blogs they write books people are just randomly misquoting them without really knowing what's going on so again everybody who makes money in the world makes money because they sell something now you sell something by creating something that someone needs or wants more than the money they'd have to give up to get it super simple shit for example if you offer your job 40 hours of your time per week to them that's worth more to them in terms of value than the money they pay you to work there right so they value your focused attention and time for those 40 hours way more than the money you're getting paid which kind of lets you know that pretty much everybody is underpaid when you really think about it because time is the stuff that life is made of so it's like it's completely invaluable so to be able to put such low price tags the way we do a lot of the time honestly is kind of crazy which is why it frustrates me that like musicians think they shouldn't get paid it's like what bro you're putting your life force into this make some money want it want it because you cannot get it if you don't want it so if you learn to sell you will always be able to make money you'll always be able to sell yourself to a job right if you want to like a any kind of job any kind of promotion learn to sell learn to negotiate there's many kinds of like words that you can use as analogs selling negotiation persuasion is kind of like an aspect of those things i wouldn't call marketing or advertising an aspect of those things those are kind of separate and branding is also separate and we can talk about that on another day. The whole point is that you can't really be afraid of that. It's not like people picture used car salesmen when they hear sales. We've got to dump that. I've been hearing a lot of creators kind of say that recently. Like, bro, it's that's you got to dump that image because that's really not what it is. And I know there's people out there that still give off that vibe. We're in the point of culture of like really, really shaking that shit off. It's coming. But like you have to be a part of that or it's going to be hard to make money in any aspect, right? Like this applies to everything. This applies to getting your kids to eat the right food or go to bed on time. This applies to getting your spouse or your significant other to see the world from your perspective a little bit more so that you guys have at least a better understanding, maybe not necessarily convince them to do something they wouldn't do otherwise. But like 
everything in life to some degree in terms of interaction is negotiating. I mean, you could even say you're negotiating with physical forces. I'm going to sell gravity on it not crushing me today by just standing up and not letting my body atrophy. But now we're getting into pretty metaphysical things. So let's move on. There's a major issue that comes to artists and creatives when they're trying to sell stuff. And it took me a very long time to figure this out because when I was selling beats, it was very fucking hard at first because I could only get one off sales. And so if I didn't get like those one off sales to be like exclusives or basically max usage stem sales, it was going to be very hard to pay my rent. And this was like when I was in grad school, I chose not to get a work study job because I was able to sell beats enough to pay my rent sometimes but because i was so focused on getting like new customers it was very very difficult to keep it consistent and i knew that the holy grail of selling beats of selling anything basically is recurring customers right because coke makes a lot of money through recurring customers through satisfying someone once so much that they just buy coke over and over again it's the same thing for like a lot of stuff in life and even in like beats and stuff like i would make the most money when i had a recurring customer but i couldn't figure that out and the reason i couldn't figure that out was because i was just trying to sell stuff to random people instead of building connections with the people that i already sold stuff to or that were already interested in my stuff and then kind of like making a more valuable offer to them honestly in terms of what i would be giving them based on that relationship and so we can actually use that word to like succinctly wrap up the main idea for this point of the video which is basically that if you actually want to sell stuff more effectively don't just sell to random people you will get random sales by the very function of the way the internet works and the very function of life like random things will happen if you just like try to sell stuff and you put a product out there and you drive traffic to it but the way you really make money especially as a creative is with like relationships that drive like some kind of recurring connection or some kind of recurring engagement so that could be like just building a relationship with like a creator or a musician that you collab a lot with like i don't think kyle would be a good example for this because i just kind of genuinely fuck with him but we do have a relationship that was created off of content creation and we regularly collab and that's like in a way that's kind of like what i'm talking about but there's also like many artists that buy beats consistently from me you might be watching this video and you might have bought more than one thing from me right so like those are like the things you want but the way that happens is by creating rapport between you and the people who will purchase your things which is basically just building a relationship the way i like to think about it is having like a really long conversation with someone and then just letting them make a decision about whether or not what you have to offer will help them because the consumer is very intelligent so you don't want to treat them like they're stupid and so i've been hearing this thing a lot in business lately this is what they say a lot the best kind of customer is a well-informed customer and like that's where they leave it it leaves you with a lot to think about but i think what they mean the best kind of customer is a well-informed customer because then they can make a well-informed decision about what's going on in your ecosystem so the best way to do it that i think and that has worked for me you want to just talk to them you can't just randomly strike up conversations so provide value and then use that to initiate conversations or just use the value in and of itself to be the conversation which is basically like content creation it can also be the music that you create and you can curate engagement through that but you can also leverage social media to speak with your fans as well like people used to have to do pop-up shops and like actually do like phone lines and fan clubs and stuff and really really you know do like road teams and stuff before social media came around people forget e very easily how difficult this shit actually used to be have those long conversations because those are people who are going to be like no shit i'm gonna buy his ticket like i've talked to him a bunch of times that's why people have fan clubs that's why they have call lines that's why they have road teams they do the flyers they they're touching hands they're kissing babies they're shaking hands it's like that's why because you've got to connect with people and actually make them care about what you're doing so there's a lot of ways to do that newsletter short form content creation long form content creation blogging forums reddit you know there's like three different kinds of twitters now there's like blue sky there's threads there's x i can't believe i just called it x but like there's there's youtube shorts there's tiktok which is like also has long form there's youtube for long form there's a billion different ways you can blog substack medium bro 
create something where you can have conversations with people that are valuable and enriching. That immediately pulls you out of a commodity market and puts you into a premium value market where only you can offer what you're offering solely based on that relationship, right? So then from there, you just place what they would need in front of them. So for example, if you curated an audience of people, let's say you're an artist and you curate an audience of people interested in pop culture as it relates to music, right? And you, you build like a dope newsletter. You talk about that on social media. Of course, you're also a musician. You have your own music and you talk about that, but you're curating this newsletter off of something that hopefully you're also passionate about while also working on stuff that you work on. Over time, you use your newsletter to promote stuff that you're doing. So every once in a while, you could solely do a promo post or you could literally just promote it in every newsletter. Be like, oh, and by the way, I dropped my new single. Check it out on my playlist. You could even use it for playlist curation. Here's another one. If you were a songwriter, you could literally do remixes, covers on YouTube, right? Of like the Billboard 100, the chart topping songs and stuff like that, right? Use those to do remixes to drive traffic to your channel and then have a newsletter and your lead magnet could be like singing lessons, right? Or instrument lessons. If it's like a, you play instruments too, it could be anything, right? Or like a, how to do something that's very interesting in your content creation, something like that. Create a lead magnet where you can build like a newsletter. And then when you get to like a certain amount of people on your newsletter, like maybe a couple hundred or even a few thousand, you could literally drop your album and sell it to them for like 10 dollars and literally bundle it with something else like merch or literally anything else because they would already be tapped in with you at that point and then you're not getting eight cents for your entire ep at that point right you're getting ten dollars per person that buys it because they cared that much and that's you didn't really do anything that deep you just did something you were gonna do anyway like i sound passionate about it right now because like that's literally like what other people do that they won't tell you that's basically what i do honestly if you think about it and i've never heard anyone refer to it this way but you could honestly think about it as like the content funnel offer basically let me see how i could wrap my head around this basically so i could explain it to you very clearly it's really difficult to think about how to set up offers if you're very new to like entrepreneurship it's a very like difficult concept to actually wrap your head around like niggas be writing books about this shit. it's it's complicated it's very complicated so the easiest way to set yourself up is to just give a lot of value through content and be very engaging and inspiring and entertaining and educating through your content and then find a way to capture some of that either through a lead magnet where you get people's emails or through some kind of low ticket product where you make some money but also still get contact information because remember recurring customers is how you're going to be sustainable in this shit right that would be what i would say to do if you're a musician or a creative in general who wants to make money or like anyone online who wants to make money right if you're like randomly on this video because you saw the title and you think it has something to do with you it that will work for you that's literally how everyone makes money online it, it like literally is not different for anybody online right the way it goes is that the more value you provide the more offers you can make to people I mean, because that's just simple math, more value provision means, means more people, more people will take those as like a more palatable thing. They'll be like, oh, OK, like he's provided me with a shit ton of value. Like, I don't care. Like, I'll at least consider the offer. And then when they check it out, they're like, oh, well, this is actually something that I need. And if he's provided me this much value for free, why would I not go get this thing if I need it? And it's like, if they have the money, it's basically a no brainer. And that's how purchases happen. Basically, I would assume that's how my purchases go. I don't know. Right. So the more value you provide, the more offers you can make. And the more offers you make, the more people you help. And the more people you help and the more people you serve, the happier everyone is that is involved with that system, which is always a good thing, right? You get paid, you're fulfilled. They get what they want. They're fulfilled. Everyone is fucking happy. But the interesting thing is that none of this commerce and business, none of the streams, none of the money, none of the merch, none of the touring, none of the anything that happens in this music business is possible without money. And it's like, that's the thing that motherfuckers hate. And it's like, that's crazy because first of all, you wouldn't even be able to consume music at the scale that you do without money because music is a business. And that's why people are encouraged to build these streaming platforms. That's why people run the streaming platforms in the first place. Labels are not charities, bro. <laughs> they are literally banks. I don't know what people think is going on. And I, okay, like everyone hates labels and it's like, okay, fair. But like, that doesn't mean music is not a bit like hating it doesn't make it true. I can hate the government. They are still there. <laughs> like they're not going away you feel me gang so it's like 
don't be like that don't be a person like that i'm begging you i know it's gonna be people out there but please you don't be like that bro you don't be like that please as we've discussed money can be a touchy subject when it comes to the space of creativity and artistry and honestly it's super easy to get pushed back into that feeling of feeling like damn should i not want to make money like i be feeling like that and like bro i i be fighting that feeling on the daily like no don't let these niggas convince you that you want to be a starving artist because i don't want that i don't claim that for my life at all and i don't claim that for your life either right but they definitely create this feeling of like damn should i feel bad for it and the thing that has really helped me is actually my newsletter is actually getting to write about it and seeing the responses of people being like no i feel like that about this topic too getting hundreds of replies getting getting people like th saying stuff back to me that is like the exact same thoughts so my suggestion my recommendation my offer to you is that if you feel like that sometimes or you question it or you just want good information or nice camaraderie with people who think a lot like you here are your two options you can join my newsletter of 14,000 music producers and audio engineers there's your one option which is 100 percent free or you can join my discord of over 1100 music producers also 100 percent free songwriters artists and engineers are welcome and i'm sure they're in there but it's very because i'm a producer so it's very focused on producers but either way wherever you go if you've made it to, to the end of this video i want you to know that you deserve to get paid for your creativity you deserve to make money you deserve to have whatever you want in life because pleasure is not a bad thing right I, there's a lot of stuff in society that wants us to think that pleasure is bad but i promise you that whatever you want out of life is probably not as bad as whatever life is trying to make you feel like it is right it might require a little bit of order it might require a little bit of organization but i can promise you there's nothing wrong with wanting pleasure. There's nothing wrong with wanting good things. And there's definitely nothing wrong with wanting to get paid for your art or for your music. So I hope you have a blessed day and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.